Why, hello there once again, or for the very first time, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between. I'm some guy, and I'm here today to continue the over-analysis slash walkthrough of Undercover Missions Kursk. So let's keep on keeping on and just pick up where we left off at the start of Chapter 2. So we're here inside this room, our own quarters as a game likes to put it, and we need to pick up everything that isn't bolted down. And then after that, we need to jet out of this place. I better leave the files here. Well, you heard the lady, we better leave the files here first. Now, a lesser game may automatically do this for you, but not undercover missions. No, we have to manually place down every single last one of the files that we brought on the ship with us, and just leave them alone in our quarters so anyone passing through could check them out and then maybe cast some suspicion on us for having a bunch of files that quite frankly no tech officer should have on them. But oh well, I guess we're not about discretion in this game. We're gonna leave everything out here in the open and talk to the guy we need to talk to. I guess he said come in or we're just barging in. Again, subtlety doesn't appear to be our forte. Excuse me. Weapon System Officer Korobelnikov? That's me. And you are? Lieutenant Tatiana Sokolova. I'm here to check the new weapon systems. Indeed. I have the spare parts with me that you asked for. I can install them myself if you want. Interesting. As soon as they approve of the new equipment, they send someone to check on us. I don't understand why this man is so surprised that someone's showing up to check on the new weapon system that's just been installed. That seems, you know, kind of routine to me. But what do I know? Maybe in Russia things work differently. May I ask where you got your orders from? Straight from the Ministry. And why did they send you of all people? My god, this voice actor sounds like he's about to fall asleep. Guys like, uh... Oh, this game, man. Leonid Andreevich. I am good at what I do. Really? Ever been on a submarine before? I had very good training. So I take it that that's a no. Oh really? By whom? Tell me. I think the weapon system is more important than me, Leonid Andreevich. Where do I find the computer system for the missile control? Why does she keep saying this guy's name over and over again? It's like she's afraid she's gonna forget it? Here, you have the access card. You will find the way but I'll be keeping an eye on you. Well, he must have some hidden cameras then, because the fool never leaves this room. Oh well, let's go ahead and repair the weapon system or do whatever the hell we need to be doing. The protective cover is now removed. Doing that with my bare- Yeah, I cut her off there, because believe it or not, this puzzle's only mildly frustrating. You see, we don't have the tools necessary to actually take the little chip set out. So what we need to do is make sure that everything is closed and shut and put back the way we found it, and then we can leave the room. Why, you say? Because this game just wants to be very, very frustrating. You see, for whatever reason, our heroine cannot leave this room, because she's convinced she'll leave some traces behind. Which, to me, makes me wonder if the developer just couldn't keep the continuity of the room. Say you left the locker open, then you left, and then you came back, and then you'd be like, huh, oh, the locker's closed now. I know you, game, you're just loading in the same area again. But yeah, we go back to the damn first officer, and he gives us the tools to fix the chips that we should have gotten at the very beginning, but he was holding out on us for reasons of adventure game logic or just because he's a damn dirty dick. So now we can go back to the missile control room and mess around with the chips and replace them. And that's exactly what we're doing now, through the power of a fun mini game. So this game has, I think, a total of 11 mini-games, if it's Steam page is to be believed. And for the most part, they're competently made. Like this one. We have to put the bits on the chipboard, and yeah, there's a rhyme and reason to it. And I'm sure if you thought about it, you could figure out what the game's trying to tell you. Or you could just brute force your way through this puzzle, which is exactly what I did. I just dragged everything over every spot, and eventually, oh, it became built. But again, I'm sure there's an underlying logic to where the chips go, but frankly, just mindless dragging is just as effective. So now all we have to do is return the room to the way we found it, and we're done. Our cover mission is complete. So the weapons officer should ask us to leave the sub now. At least you would think that, because there's really no legitimate reason for us to be on the ship anymore. But now he doesn't care at all. He just wants his stuff back. And now we can roam around the sub and do whatever the hell we want. Like, say, talk to the first officer, because that seems to be what the game wants me to do. I'm not entirely sure why, but I'm rolling with it. It is time to look for Osip. The first officer should know where I can find him. I just need an unsuspicious reason to ask about him. 
An unsuspicious reason, you say? Why? In that apartment, we found a letter from his family member on the bed, so we'll just address it to him and then tell the first officer, yo, he's got mail. Can I deliver it to him? Totally nothing suspicious about this at all. So yeah, that's honestly all we need to do. Just assemble the items together, and boom, we can talk to the first officer. Well, well, I am glad that you've come to visit me. I hope I'm not disturbing you. Not at all. I will be solely in the company of sailors for the weeks ahead, so I am pleased to see such a pretty young lady before we sail off. You are very charming. Because of the weeks at sea with so many sailors? But you are certainly not here only because of me. What can I do for you? So there's no dialogue options in this game, so we have to drag the letter over to him, and then he acknowledges its existence for us. A letter? Yes, for one of your sailors. I really don't like that. Post has to come officially. Of course, and I don't want to break the rules. But since the Kursk sails off, it seems safer to bring the letter with me. You know how important it is for the sailors to keep in contact with their families. You have a soft heart. Which sailor are we talking about? Osip Gorasimov. So is the first officer just lazy or illiterate? We gave him the damn letter. It should have the dude's name clearly written on it. Or maybe our penmanship's terrible. I think I'm going with the third option. Gerasimov. Of course. Hard-working guy. You know what? I'll bring him the letter. I don't want to keep you from work. I know how busy a man in your position could be before sailing off. You're right. Go to the sailor's accommodation, room E8. However, if you don't find him, you'll have to try again later. Thank you, Rekor Segerevich. So that's pretty straightforward for this game. Go to the sailor's room, find the sailor, talk to him. Hmm. Osip Gerasimov is not here. He probably has something to do. Well, of course the fool's not here. Why would anything in this game be easy? So yeah, as you would expect like in every adventure game, we're going to click on everything and take anything that isn't nailed down. Because you never know, it could be a hint. Like these two random bits of paper we find lying around. Those are very important and useful items that we're going to need later on. So now that we're armed with every item we can get a hold of, we're gonna go to the radio room and talk to a random dude in there because we got nothing else to do. And yeah, you have to click on the dude's crotch to talk to him. Mm-hmm. But hey, on the plus side, at least this game has hotspot detection. So there's no pixel hunting necessary. Because how the hell was I supposed to guess that I need to touch a man's crotch to talk to him? What a nice lady. Please tell me you're coming with us as our lucky charm. Touch a man's crotch and all of a sudden it becomes your best friend. Who would have thunk it? I hate to disappoint you, but I'll be gone before the ship sails. Shame. But I guess it's better for you. Yeah, being the only lady on the sub filled with sailors 3,000 feet under the sea could lead to some, well... Ugh, do I need to explain it? Why? I should not say that. You know, I like my job. But when you're at sea, it's almost impossible to stay in touch with the rest of the world. Often, for a long time, it's difficult. That I can imagine. Let's take my family. Alyosha, that is, my brother. He's such a pain in the neck. If I miss contacting my family on a holiday, you have no idea what he thinks he has to tell me. How does he think I can call home when we are sailing somewhere just above the ocean ground? Dude, you're a pretty bad sailor if you're calling the surface the ocean ground. I'm just saying, they should have covered this stuff in sailor school. But he always snags me by saying, You forgot mother's birthday. And the conversation abruptly ends there. I guess we just thought it was awkward, so we just kind of slowly backed away. But okay, believe it or not, the game actually gave us a hint as to what to do there. Remember those random letters we found earlier in the barracks? Well, one of them was talking about how it was this dude's mom's or grandmom's birthday. So we show him the letter and then he leaves. Because we need something in here. I don't know what, but we need something. Sorry, is that yours? I found it on the ground outside the cabins. Oh, thanks a lot. I must have lost it. It says something about mother, birthday, and the 20th. Say, isn't today the 20th? Oh dear, you're right. Mamushka's 55th. Uh, excuse me, I need to go to the captain right now to ask for permission to wish her happy birthday. Happy to be of help wherever I can. So it took this guy a second to leave the room. I don't know, I guess he was overjoyed to wish his mama a happy birthday. Gosh, I hope nothing terrible happens to him. So now we can do whatever the hell we want to in here. And what we want to do in here is mess around with the computer so we can find out where the guy is that we need to deliver the letter to. 
but oh no, it's password protected. How the hell are we going to figure out this password? The game says it's like a common thing, a well-known word. Oh, wait a minute. Another random thing we picked up in the sailor's quarters was a hymn. It's a title of the hymn. We just need to mess around with the letters until eventually it spells out the hymn's name. And yeah, don't ask me how this puzzle works. Again, I just brute force my way through it. Osip Grasimov had served in the missile control room and in the air supply recently. Leonid Korobelnikov has key cards for these rooms. Yegor Sobolev, too. Maybe I can manage to snatch one of them. Well, wonderful. We know some more stuff now. We know we need to get a key card so we can access some other areas, but how the hell do we do that? Well, actually, we can't do that because we still need to talk to that damn sailor, and he's just not gonna show up. And you're probably wondering, well, guy, how the hell do you make the sailor show up? I honestly have no clue. I don't know if him showing up is on a timer, if it's a series of events you need to complete, or if it's just pure blind luck. Because I honestly guy just wandered around the ship, clicking on everything, trying to do everything I could, until eventually, one time I went back to the crew quarters, oh my god, he's here. What did I do to cause this? I don't know. I have never been able to successfully replicate it. So, I don't know if this is a very well designed puzzle, or maybe it's just a timed event that I'm bitching about. But damn it, game, you are not very clear. Yeah, it sounds like something's being unlocked, but we're just standing around here. Again, I, I don't know what's going on, guys. I don't know what's going on. But we can talk to this guy at last. I'm sure it'll be really weird and awkward. I have something that belongs to you. A letter. From your wife. She is touched because of the promotion and the money that you sent that your children needed so desperately. What? Who the hell are you? You are messing with the wrong people, Gerasimov. I don't know what you're talking about. That makes two of us. I'm confused. Is he the informant or is he a guy who's a part of the gang stealing stuff? Because I thought he was the informant, so why would being a dick to the guy who's trying to help us? But, okay, maybe he should be scared of us because, you know, Russian justice? <laughs> the money in your apartment? The circuit boards? You play with very bad guys, Grasimov. And that will cost you your life in the future. How do you know? I haven't spoken with anyone. So yeah, he totally is the informant. And it seems like we're accusing him of being involved in everything. But isn't he helping us? Does this guy not get any protection? Or are we just gonna be a dick to him? I'm on your side, Osip. If you want to see your children again, you should tell me about a few things. I'm on your side, but if you want to see your children again, you're gonna talk to me because otherwise I'm gonna kill them. But again, I'm on your side. My god, how passive aggressive are we? What? I don't think that you... Oh no, someone else must be coming on stage because the screen's fading to black. Because animation's difficult to do, guys. Have you got nothing to do, Gerasimov? Get back to work. Yes, sir. Excuse me, I have to work. So everyone leaves now. Oh no, we were this close to getting this guy to spill the beans about whatever the hell's going on and our entire reason for being on this sub. Bloody hell. I almost had him. Two more minutes and he would have told me everything. I have to keep trying. Then I'll find out something. You and me both, lady. You and me both. So now we wander around the sub a little bit. Looks like Sobolev hasn't closed his door completely. Alright, now that we're in here, we can read through the schedule for the crew again. And really, really know where that guy's working at that we were talking to who's about to spill the beans and tell us about everything that's going on in this damn sub of mystery. Here is a work schedule and some other documents. Let's see. Osip Gerasimov had continuous service in the last two weeks. So he had nothing to do directly with the disappearance of Arthur. Because he's been on the ship for two weeks, he had nothing to do with the disappearance of the guy who was burned alive that we were talking about earlier, who I just found out through the power of the Steam description was our partner. And he's gone missing. But wait a minute, he's established to be dead pretty early on in the game. I'm just terribly confused at this point, but yay, the sub dude didn't kill a guy who was missing. Today he is on duty in the air supply, refilling of extinguishing gas. Good to know. So thank god this game gave us a hint as to how to solve this puzzle. We need to get a key card from one of the guys, and the only guys we can get a key card from is a weapons officer. Golov! 
Clean the floor outside my door at once. So how the hell does a weapon officer even know we're here? He's just a raving lunatic yelling, I guess non-stop, out his door until somebody cleans his damn floor so we might as well do it ourselves. And to do that, we gotta pick up a toothbrush that just randomly phases into existence in the sailor's quarters. Yeah, it wasn't there before, but now it's here. This game likes to do that a lot. It just brings items into existence in areas you've already thoroughly explored and just to mess with you. Dear children, change your toothbrush regularly. This gross thing is certainly not good for your little teeth. Auntie Melina will throw it away now. You can thank me later. Well, that was just really creepy, lady. So now we can use a toothbrush on a little lock that's in this bunk bed. And that's how I pick this lock, with a toothbrush. Some lock. With this toothbrush, I can reach the lock. And click. A key ring, two big keys, and a small one. And we're going to use that to unlock a locker near the first officer's door. And inside of this locked locker is a bucket, which we're going to fill with water from any sink available to us. And then we're going to throw it in front of the weapons officer's room. That must have been one of those infinity buckets, because I swear that sounds like a lot of water coming out. The door is not completely sealed. All the water runs now into Korobelnikov's cabin. Golov! You are shaming the Russian Navy! You should clean the floor, not sink the Kursk! You, what are you doing here? Do you see this mess? He should clean the floor. My whole room is flooded. Golov, where are you? Can I help you? No, you can't. Oh my god, this character does have animation. And he's just leaving us alone with his door wide open because apparently we flooded his room with one tiny bucket of water. That doesn't make a lick of sense, but hey! We can go in his room and steal the damn key once he gets done walking away. Off I go. Wonderful, now we have access to a new area. The same area where the crew members work in that we were talking to earlier on about all the shady stuff that's been going on. So hopefully nothing bad's- oh god, he's dead and the room's filling with gas. Ah, <sighs> how dramatic. Quickly, let's grab this cable over here and mess around with this, I guess, breaker box or whatever the hell this is over here. And fix it through a little mini game so we can leave the room and not die. Good, the door should be open. Time to get out of here. Oh yeah, just take your sweet time, guy. It's not like we're dying from poisonous gas like the other crew member who's already dead. And so ends chapter two of Undercover Missions Curse or whatever this sub is called. Do you think we survived? Of course we survived. You'll find out what we do next time on chapter three of the over analysis of undercover missions, whatever the name of the sub is. Have a good morning, good afternoon, or a good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between.